Okay, I've got my Ryzen CPU installed with Windows running. What now? Stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. Many of you know I recently upgraded my old Intel build to a Ryzen one. Well, after I finished it up, I got to downloading everything and just figured I'd make a video about the first things to do with your new Ryzen build, because not everything is extremely straightforward. Now, before I begin, this does assume you're running on Windows 10 and already have it installed, though Linux users will have similar steps. Either way, let's get into it. The first thing is pretty typical for most any new system, and that's driver updates. Going to your motherboard manufacturer's website is an easy way to find most everything, but there's one update that some people probably don't know you should get directly from AMD, and that's the AMD chipset driver. You can get the chipset drivers from your motherboard manufacturer, but as of late, there's one critical item that's missing from at least my motherboard's chipset driver. To get it yourself, head over to AMD's site, then click on Support and Drivers. From here, you'd think you just download and install the automated software, but you don't. Instead, go over here, down to Chipset, select Ryzen, and then your motherboard's chipset, and then your OS. So what's important about this? Well, the biggest thing is that it comes with AMD's Ryzen Balance Plan. For those who don't know, the current balance plan that comes with Windows hinders Ryzen's performance in certain scenarios. This version is specifically made for your new CPU and even performs better than performance mode at times, so it's certainly a must for any Ryzen owner. Second on the list is something you don't have to do, and while it's relatively safe these days, it's not a guarantee, which is to update your BIOS, or well, UEFI. Basically, if you're having issues with, say, RAM compatibility or system instability, your current BIOS may be to blame, especially with Zen still being fairly new. For those who don't know what it is, your BIOS is essentially what talks between your operating system and firmware. It's also an integral part of boot up. Just ensure you aren't in the midst of a hurricane or an upcoming power outage, since that's the main way you'll mess something up. So what's the process? Well, for one, make sure you actually have an old BIOS. You can do that by typing msinfo in your search bar. From here, you can see your current BIOS. If it's pretty out of date, upgrading may be a good idea. To actually upgrade, it depends on your motherboard. Some have automated updates that actually use the internet to find and install the BIOS, but most require you to head over to your motherboard manufacturer's site and download a file. Typically unzip it and then copy it to a thumb drive. Next, you want to restart your computer and head into your BIOS. From here, simply select your motherboard's BIOS installation tool and select the file you put in the thumb drive. Make absolute certain you don't turn your computer off or anything like that during this process. Once it's done, it'll restart and possibly ask you to set up your BIOS, which you can just go into it and then exit and you're good to go. This brings us to our third item on the to-do list, install Ryzen Master and Cinebench. Ryzen Master is software made by AMD that gives you very accurate temperatures, voltages, and clocks for every single core. Cinebench, on the other hand, is a great tool to test your CPU speed, as well as help you test your overclocks by looking at temps and stability while it's pushing your CPU. I'll have downloads for both of these linked in the description. Lastly, is to simply overclock both your CPU and memory. As a warning, this certainly isn't something you have to do, and it will void your warranty but the chance you'll need an RMA is pretty small, as long as you ensure you know what you're doing. Just know that the risk, no matter how small, is there. Either way, because all Ryzen CPUs have unlocked multipliers, unlike Intel's non-K or X variants, this means every Ryzen CPU is capable of manual overclocking, given your motherboard is the proper chipset. And when it comes to Ryzen, overclocking your CPUs, especially the non-X models like the Ryzen 1400 and 1700, can yield some very good results. When it comes to RAM overclocking, many of you have heard the benefits higher frequency RAM can bring to Ryzen CPUs, but while I think it's been somewhat exaggerated, it is still something you can do to squeeze out some extra performance. You're able to do these in either Ryzen Master or your BIOS. Ryzen Master can be simpler, but no matter how you do it, make sure you only move up in increments so not to overdo it. But definitely understand this isn't an overclocking guide, I may do that one day, but there are some videos up about it already. So while that ends today's video, definitely don't forget to subscribe. It helps the channel out and helps me bring more content like this. And let me know what you thought. Is there something you prefer to do normally? Tell me in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.